This is Matt with UAV America. We're here with part two of our Pixhawk setup video. Um, the first part we covered all the hardware connections and now we're going to cover installing the firmware and configuring the sensors and the motor outputs. So the first thing you're going to need to do is download Mission Planner. Uh, the best place to do that is right from the 3D Robotics website. They always have a link to the freshest version. Um, I've got my Pixhawk plugged in <clears throat> and you can see here it's showing up as COM35. Um, you'll probably have to select the correct COM port when you plug it in. When you're connecting via USB the baud rate is going to be 115,200. If you're connecting via the wireless telemetry radio you'll connect at 57.6. Uh, in order to install the firmware we need a direct connection to the Pixhawk so we're using USB connection First step, we're going to come over to the initial setup and we're going to click on install firmware. You do need a live internet connection for this to work correctly, so make sure that that's going. We're going to click on Hexa, we're using a Hexcopter here, so whatever frame type you have, you're going to select here. Now it's telling me to unplug the Pixhawk, press OK, and plug it back in. And you'll see a progress bar here on the bottom. It'll first erase the Pixhawk and then program it with the new firmware. There we go. And it's going to tell you to wait for the musical tones, which is really just asking you to wait until the Pixhawk fully boots up. I don't have the speaker connected to mine, so I'm going to wait till the LEDs indicate that the gyros have initialized, and now I'm getting a blue flashing light. So that means it's ready to arm. So I'm going to click OK. And this is giving you a warning. If you're updating from a previous version lower than 3.0, um, you have to do a compass calibration. OK. So now we're going to, I'm going to unplug my USB connection. And then I'm going to reconnect using the telemetry radio. For a lot of these sensor calibrations, you're going to need to be able to move your multi rotor around in different orientations. So, this is our telemetry radio. We're going to select 57.6 for our baud rate. I'm going to plug in my flight battery to power the Pixhawk. flight data and click connect here and it takes a couple seconds to pull all the parameters down wirelessly and you can check that you have a good connection by just moving your multi rotor around and making sure the horizon moves and that's good so first thing we do is come and click on initial setup you can run the wizard. The wizard will take you through all the steps of installing the firmware uh, and then all the steps that we're about to do here. Uh, I prefer to do it this way. Once you go into the wizard, you can't back out, so it, it sort of forces you to go all the way through. Um, it's really good for new users or first time using it, so the wizard will take you through every one of these steps uh, that I'm about to show you. So um, The first step is going to be the frame type. Uh, if you have an asymmetrical frame, like a V or a Y, something like that, you would select one of these. We're running a regular X hexcopter, so we're going to stick with the pre-selected X configuration. The next one is the accelerometer calibration. You want to have a relatively level surface to do this on. Place, place vehicle level and press any key. Place, place vehicle, vehicle level and press any key. Place vehicle on its left side and press any key. Place vehicle on its right side and press any key. Place vehicle on its right side and press any key. You, you want to keep keep it very still when you press the key. This is the accelerometer calibration. So if you're moving it while you calibrate Place it, vehicle the, nose down and press any key. 
place vehicle nose down and press any key. If you're moving it, the accelerometers won't calibrate correctly, and you could get a an error in how the flight controller estimates what level really is. So it's important to do this right. Place vehicle nose up and press any key. Place vehicle nose up and press any key. Place vehicle on its back and press any key. Place vehicle on its back and press any key. Calibration successful. Okay. Well, next we're going to come down to the compass calibration. Uh, there's a couple of things we need to check first. Um, we want to we enable the compass first of all. We want to enable auto declination. That means that once you get a GPS lock, the, comp the PixHawk will automatically write a new compass declination. If you change your longitudinal position on the Earth, it'll automatically compensate for it. Um, you can either select PixHawk or PX4 or rotation none under manual. It'll be the same thing. Over here it has a little sort of settings map. If you're using an APM with an onboard compass or an external compass, different orientations for those compasses. When you do the live compass calibration, you don't want to be near any big pieces of metal. Ideally, you do it outside. Uh, that's not o not always feasible, but you don't want to have any keys or cell phones in your pocket or anything like that while you're doing it. There's there's other videos um, on YouTube, and I, I think we've made a couple just on compass calibration itself. So it's a pretty important thing, and uh, it's a it's there's other information available out there on YouTube for that stuff. So. Start. So this is just comp calibrating the onboard magnetometers. There's two of them. And it's just showing you visually kind of data points that are hitting on the different axes yeah, of those. You have to do this on each axis? Mm -hmm. All six sides of the cube. And you get a visual representation of the different axes you need to hit. Compass calibration complete. And it'll just, it'll automatically accept it once it gets enough data points. That didn't take very long at all. Um, the compass offsets look good, so we're going to go with that. Um, if you, the only time you'd ever have to redo the compass calibration is if you add or take away any electronics on the airframe, um, or if you notice any any toilet bowling behavior. The next up is the radio calibration. This assumes that you've already ca uh, set up your radio. Um, you know, you've assigned certain channels to certain switches, and you've assigned. Um, you know, like here you'll see the throttle, pitch, roll, yaw. This is channel 5 is our mode switch. And then I've got channel 7, 8, and some of the sliders. One of the sliders is set for channel 6 there. So that stuff should all be done, and that's a, that's a topic for another day. So we're going to click on Calibrate Radio. It's just going to tell you to make sure that your transmitter or receiver are on and powered, and very importantly that your multi-rotor has no props on it. Click OK. So what it's going to ask you to do is to move the sticks to their extreme travel limits. I like to use the corners, because you know if you go to all four corners you've maxed out both channels on each stick. So we'll do that for both the left and the right stick and then we're also going to do that for the mode switch for our variable channel which is channel 6 that can be a tuning or gimbal tilt channel and then channel 7 channel 8 both of which are optional channels for the pickhawk sticks are centered throttles down and click OK to continue and here it's going to give us a little report of what the minimum and maximum values are for each one of those channels and click OK the next is flight modes. This is pretty straightforward. If uh, I'm using a three position switch, so we're going to be hitting position uh, you know mode slot one, four, and six. Currently I've got it set up for stabilize, position hold, and auto. Um, you can set that up to how you you like to have it. That's sort of a personal preference. Fail safe. Again, it's going to give you a warning to make sure there's no props on your plane or quad. Um, there's, this, it's showing our radio inputs and motor and servo outputs right here in these two columns. Um, right here it's showing what flight mode we're in, showing we're disarmed and we have no GPS fix. On our battery fail safe, I have this set to 13.5 volts. I'm not using a reserve milliamp hour calculation. 
Um, the action that I have set for my battery failsafe is return to launch. Um, the radio for the radio failsafe, um, we're going to have a radio failsafe active, but if we're in an auto mission, it will continue with the auto mission. So it'll ignore a radio failsafe. You can see uh, on our channel three, we're at 1,095. And we've got our radio program, so what we when we lose when the rate when the transmitter and receiver break contact, it's going to output a throttle pulse width of 950, which is below 975, and that way we will assure that if, if if for whatever reason if we lose connection between the transmitter and the receiver, the Pixhawk will recognize that with the low throttle signal and automatically switch into a return to launch mode. Um, this down here, GCS. This is for the ground control station. If you're using a telemetry radio, you can enable it to uh, trigger a fail safe if you lose co contact with that and have it return to launch. On optional hardware, this is for the 3DR radio. We don't need to do anything with this. We've got, uh, if you buy radios from 3DR or any of the other vendors, they'll already be set up for both of your, um, bo both radios are to be paired together. But here you can change the baud rate, the airspeed, the net ID. The net ID is the main thing you'll be able to change um, in order to pair the radios together. They have to have the same net ID. Um, next is the battery monitor. You can see here I've got it selected for bat to monitor battery voltage and battery current. We're using the 3DR power module and the flight controller is a Pixhawk. Over here we put in that we have the battery capacity. I'm using a 5200 milliamp hour battery, so we're going to enter that in. And this checkbox right here is to um, this will let Mission Planner give you a visual and audible alert on low battery. So that can be really handy if you're flying with telemetry. Down here on the calibration page, it's showing you the measured battery voltage, the calculated. Some of these. Uh, power modules use, use a voltage divider. Um, the amperage it's calculating right now is you know about 500 milliamps which is about right for um, for being off and then amps per volt is the formula for calculating amperage off that input pin. This is the compass motor calibration page. Uh, this is pretty important to do especially if your compass is mounted near a video transmitter or your uh, your motor. This is really uh, a motor calibration so um, what this test does is it you'll need to put the props on, you'll need to secure your multi-rotor and this this test will ramp up the throttle and it'll measure the amperage draw over here and it'll measure the amount of compass interference over here. Um, this machine has essentially zero compass offsets so I don't have, I, I'm not using any compass offsets, I think our offsets are only about two or three percent um, some machines have a much bigger offset and it's much more important to do. I recommend doing it on, on any new build. We, we do the compass motor calibration on everything that we build with a Pixhawk. If you have an OSD module and it's not updating, you can try clicking this enable telemetry. Not all the OSD cables have transmit and receive wires in them, so if your OSD cable only has a receive, it's not going to send out a transmit signal to the Pixhawk, so you have to enable the data stream. Uh, if you're using a camera gimbal, you'll configure it in here. This is for the output for the servo. Um, you can choose whether or not you want to stabilize it or not. And then these are the servo limits, the travel limits, the angle limits, and then the input channel to control that. Um, you have tilt, roll, pan, and then if you're using a a shutter trigger. This is the configuration for that here. Um, this is for if you're using an antenna tracker, uh, which is a ground station that's able to keep the antenna facing your machine. Um, it's more of an advanced cali uh, advanced setup that we're not going to cover today. The motor test. This allows you to test the motor outputs to make sure that uh, a your motor output is to the correct position on the frame, and then to verify the rotation. Um, this is if you're using a Bluetooth module. Uh, again, it's an advanced config configuration that uh, most basic users aren't going to aren't going to be dealing with. Uh, let me go back to this. Well, th that will that'll cover all the basic configuration. There's obviously much more uh, in-depth information out there. 
Um, if you guys have any questions on it, don't hesitate to contact us through our YouTube channel or give us a call at the shop sometime. Thanks for watching.